Hey y'all, this lesson is on using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. So um, in my previous video, I showed how to derive the quadratic formula and then now we will use it. We found that when we derived the quadratic formula that we got this for our formula. So I would recommend writing the formula down every time you use it. And then that way you don't really have to work on memorizing it right before a test. That way it's already in there. You've written it down a hundred times. You've got it, it's there. Um, there's also a memory song that you can use to help you remember the formula. I will not sing it again. If you want, if you want to hear the song, you can watch the previous video. I am not a singer. So uh, we are using this formula. This formula is based off of a standard equation where the a value is with x squared, the b value is with x, and the c value is a constant, given that everything is on the same side of the equation. So before you can even use the quadratic formula, you have to move everything over to the same side. And the point of the quadratic formula is to help us find the x-intercepts of a quadratic. And it is so nice because even if the function doesn't factor or you can't use a square root property and it has imaginary solutions, you can use the quadratic formula. So I really like completing the square and the quadratic formula because you can use them every single time, no matter what type of solutions or how many solutions you have. Um, the quadratic formula has quickly become my go-to for solving quadratics. There are sometimes easier methods to solve to solve a quadratic, but um, you know maybe it's not the fastest way, but it works every time. So you don't have to try to factor and then realize, oh darn, it doesn't work. Now I got to try this. It works every time. It's a nice little default. It's great. So let's just dive right in. I've got a couple examples here. In my first example, the equation is already in standard form. So before you use the quadratic formula, sometimes it's helpful to identify the A, B, and C values. Our A value in this case is eight, our B value is two, and our C value is negative one. And yes, it does matter make sure you have the correct signs with the numbers. My formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And yes, it does matter. It is all over 2a. Not just this, the whole numerator is over 2a. It does matter, be very careful with that. And now I'm just gonna plug it in. I would recommend when you plug it in using parentheses. So we've got negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write the formula part in pink and then the pieces I'm plugging in in purple. A, C. And then that way you can see which pieces are the formula and which pieces are plugged in. All over two times A. So now we've plugged it all in, which means all we have to do is simplify. And when you simplify, you want to basically use the order of operations. And when you do that, I would recommend simplifying inside the square root first. So inside the square root, we are squaring two. And then this is all multiplication. Negative four times eight is 32. Ne sorry, negative four times eight is negative 32 times negative one is positive 32. 
all over two times eight, which is 16. Then inside the square root, we want to add. And now we have negative two plus or minus the square root of 36 all over 16. 36 is a perfect square. So I'm gonna simplify that. And then I have my two solutions. I have negative two minus six all over 16 and negative two plus six all over 16. I'm not quite done. I do wanna simplify. That's gonna be negative eight over 16 and four over 16 which reduces to negative one half and one fourth. And that, my friends, is your solution. That's all. So maybe, maybe we could have factored this, or maybe you could have used completing the square. And if that's what you saw, first, then you can do that. But for the sake of this lesson, we're using the quadratic formula and it's going to work regardless of whether the function can factor or not. So let's go to the next one. Number two, the one right beside it. I want you to pause it and identify the A, B, and C value first and then come back. Hopefully you found that A was two, B was negative six, and C was one. Now I want you to pause it and write the quadratic formula and then come back. Hopefully you wrote X equals, and that's important because we're finding X, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. And now I want you to pause it and substitute your A, B, and C values into the formula and then come back. Hopefully you got negative, negative six plus or minus the square root of negative six squared minus four times two times one, all over two times two. Check and make sure all your signs are correct and all your values are correct. And then pause it and simplify what's under the square root. And you should get 36 minus eight all over two times two. I'm gonna go ahead and simplify that to four. And then continue simplifying inside the square root. I'm also going to simplify the negative negative. If you didn't yet, that's okay. And you should end up with six plus or minus the square root of 32 over four. That's not right. I subtracted wrong, so sorry. That is 28. And now I want you to pause it and try to simplify this completely. Hopefully you got that 28 breaks up into four times seven. And then the square root of four gets to come out to be two root seven. Now, if you'll notice on the outside of the square root and then this uh, number over this number, those are all even. So they are going to simplify. Now I have seen this two different ways. I've seen this where they do two different fractions and also where they just divide everything by two, whoops. So um, depending on what your homework system or your textbook does, you might see two different things. 
sorry. I got to figure out how to stop that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do two different fractions. And I've got like that. And then I'm going to reduce six fourths divided by two is three halves. And then this is root seven over two. And we've got our two solutions, kind of yucky ones. I have also seen these solutions written as one fraction or even um, two different solutions. So there's lots of different ways. You can do three halves minus root seven over two and then three halves plus root seven over two. Or uh, you might see this, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the example as one fraction like that. So any of those are okay. They're gonna get you to the same solution. So they're good. Now let's try number three here. I want you to, now that we've kind of stepped through the whole thing, I want you to pause it and try the whole thing on your own and then come back and see if we get the same thing. So hopefully you got, um, when you plugged in your values, you should get negative, negative two, plus or minus the square root of negative two squared minus four times three times four all over two times three. So if you did something wrong in this step, go ahead and pause it and correct it right now and then try to fix the rest. If not, then continue on. So under the square root, you should get four minus 48. The 48 comes from negative four times three times four all over six. And then simplify the four minus 48 under the square root to get negative 44. And uh, over to the right, you can see that I have broken up negative 44 so that I can simplify it. 44 is not prime, but it is also not a perfect square. So it is going to simplify. It's also negative, which indicates that we will have an I. Since we have a negative under the square root, that indicates an imaginary solution. So if we were to graph this quadratic, it would not cross the x-axis. And I broke it up into negative 1 times 4 times 11. The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 4 is 2. And 11 stays under. So outside, we have 2 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 11 all over 6. Then everything outside of the square root can reduce by 2. So I reduced everything by 2. And we end up with 1 plus or minus i squared 11 over all over 3. And that is your answer. That's done. Uh, you might have to write this as two different fractions. So you could write this as um, 1 third plus or minus i root 11 over 3. And even further than that, you can break it up into your two solutions, one third minus i root 11 over three, one third plus i root 11 over three. Um, since it has an i in it, we're not gonna be able to technically graph this on a coordinate plane. So uh, if you were graphing something like this that has imaginary solutions, I would recommend using vertex, y-intercept, and maybe a table of values to help you kind of figure out where your parabola is going to be. So that's all for that one. One more example, and then we'll be done with this lesson. Yay, I love this lesson. I love the quadratic formula, it's so handy. I want you to pause it and try this on your own and then come back and check. If you had done this on your own, you would see a really cool thing. Underneath the square root, we end up with zero. And when you take the square root of zero, that's just zero. And so we have nothing to plus or minus, which indicates that we're going to have one solution. So this is a parabola that touches down on the x-axis one time. So we have a couple different scenarios here in these notes. We have in the first case, we have two solutions. They are fractions, but they're two real solutions. In the second case, again, we have two 
solutions. They are real solutions. Um, and they are also irrational because of the square root seven. In the third case, we have two imaginary solutions. And in the fourth case, we have one solution. So these are all the possibilities that you're going to run across. In the first case, you might not have fractions. You might end up with um, whole numbers or whatever. But the first case has rational solutions, two rational real solutions. In the second case, we have two real irrational solutions because of this square root. In the third case, we have two imaginary solutions. And in the last case, we have one real rational solution. So there's four different things that you will come across. And those are the four different cases. Um, this might kind of run into uh, discriminants. If you have a lesson on discriminants, a discriminant is looking at just what's under the square root and it indicates what kind of solution you'll have. So um, when you're trying to decide what kind of solutions you will have or what to expect, you can look at just what's under the square root and that's going to decide your solution types. So you can kind of, if you need to, you can go back and take note of those. Um, we don't focus on that so much in this class, but if you are in a class that does, that's how you do it. So, <laughs> My dog is snorting. I'm very sorry. Um, almost made out clean uh, without him snorting, but that's okay. So our one solution is at one third comma zero. It is only one solution. You could also write that as um, one, whoops, that got kind of messy. One solution. So that is all for the quadratic formula. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be happy to help.